Hello, I'm Shan Li. Let me show you how to draw the line chart in this plugin called Figma NB Charts. Let's take a look. There are already some basic parameters here. Then I will draw one first to show you the result. We need to create a new frame. The range of this box is the size of the chart. After it is generated, click the drawing button. The basic line chart is finished quickly. Next, let's compare the drawn line chart. To see the meaning of each parameter, the left refers to this distance. I'll make it bigger now and draw it again. Obviously the distance here is wider. If you turn this switch off, it will not be displayed. This bottom distance is similar to the left. I will demonstrate this text content part for you later. Other settings are easy to understand. Let's take a look at horizontal and vertical line. You can choose not to show them. I will change the vertical line to a solid line. Size is the width of the line. Then change its color. The settings for horizontal lines and vertical lines are similar. Click the drawing button. It can be seen that both the horizontal and vertical lines have changed accordingly. The horizontal line is still a dotted line, and the vertical line has become a solid line. Here you can set the color transparency of the line, and set the number of horizontal lines. The number of vertical lines is automatically adapted. Next is the data setting part. The data range is currently 0 minus 100. The text on the dots is not displayed by default. We can turn on this switch and see what it looks like. Make the font size bigger and change it to a more conspicuous color. Okay, the value is already displayed on the small dot. Next I will focus on data input. Data can be filled in manually or generated randomly. Let me first demonstrate filling in manually. Each value must be separated by a comma. Now input some data values. The data range will automatically adapt to the data value. Let's take a look at the drawing results. Look here, the data range automatically becomes 120. But the bottom text content does not match the data. At this time, I need to go to the basic information and change it. Let me set the bottom text content to the year. I'll show you the results later. Let's go back to the data settings. This time, we will draw a smooth curve. Let's take a look at this diagram first. Then I set the bending to 40% and tried it. The results are out. The line of this line chart is relatively smooth. Please note that the text below also matches the numerical value above. Next, let's take a look at how to set up lines, area charts, and marked dots under the data. By the way, I have to restore the bending. Line width and color are easier to understand. What does this refer to? It refers to the style of the turning point of the polyline. In order to see it more clearly, I made the line width thicker and turned off the point. The turning point is now smooth. I now switch to right angles and change the color of the line. Draw it again. In comparison, the difference is obvious. Next is the area. If the area is not displayed, there will be only polylines. This is the result. I turn it back on, set its color, and demonstrate the use of the color palette. Click the small dot on the right to set the gradient color. Click the drawing button. The area becomes gradient. Next is the small dot. I turn it on. Let me make the point bigger and choose a more conspicuous color. Here you can set its stroke. This is how to set up the points. Another way to fill in data is with random data. Let me demonstrate how to use it. Here set the fluctuation range of random numbers and how many units draw a point every. I have demonstrated this bending before. Let's draw it first. 
This is the result of random numbers. Now, I change the random range to be larger. The fluctuation range of this line chart will also increase. I changed it to draw a pie in every 30 units. The dots become less dense. Let me demonstrate the setting effect of bending again. Turn off the point. This is a very smooth line chart. The settings of these lines, areas, and points are the same as those demonstrated before. Next, I will introduce the functions of the bottom row. This is the archive function, which can save basic settings except data. Click once and you will be prompted to save successfully. This is the setting of the default color template. Modify its requirements in settings. You can add a set of color templates. Click on each color block to modify the color and then save it. Return the mouse to the color template and you can see that I added it to a group of color templates before. Click here to import your line chart data through Excel. This is an auxiliary function for random data. Set here how many random numbers points you need for each group of data. This is also an auxiliary function for random numbers. It can set the trend of random numbers. There are several trends to choose from. I chose basin to try. Okay, the trend of the basin of this line chart is obvious. I'll try another mountain peak. This function is really useful. Okay, what I showed you before was how to draw a line chart of a set of data. So, in many cases, we have to draw comparison charts of multiple sets of data. You can see that there is only data one below the data. If you want to add a set of data, click the plus sign to the right of the data. Data 2 appears below. You can continue to add. Click this icon to delete data. Each set of data can enter data values separately and set their lines, areas, and dots in order to make the contrast between the three sets of data more obvious. I modified the colors of the lines respectively. I won't enter the data values of each set of data one by one. I use the random trend function and select irregular and the data will automatically change. This is the result of the line chart of multiple sets of data. So, in fact, there is an overlay relationship between each set of data. I now change all the colors of the area chart to completely opaque. Adjust opacity to 100%. Take another look at the drawing results. The blue one is data 3, which is at the outermost. Data 1 is in the innermost layer. Okay, this part of the tutorial is over. Thanks.